Good morning, everyone. Um, I was going to test uh, something, and um, I thought, why not just show you guys? Because a couple of people asked me if I could uh, do this on canvas, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to try that. But I am going to um, load this up with a lot of paint so that you can see something happening. And I am going to comb it. And then after I do this, I'm going to show you some that I just did this morning, which I thought were kind of pretty. There we are. Then some of this turquoise again. So there's a lot of paint on the surface at the moment because um, if you're going to do this on canvas, you need an overload of paint or you won't see it that much. So that's what we're going for at the moment. Oops, put it in the wrong uh, container. That's not good. And I am going to, uh, you know, comb it together in the middle and then put the uh, canvas in. but. I want a lot of paint on here and as you can see um, this is one of the things that happens that when you uh, are very loaded with paint uh, the paint doesn't have the room to expand as much as in the beginning but then when you come in with a color that some colors spread more than others look at this this is the uh, this is a sort of a brownish red see how that spreads because some paints need less oxgall than others. But I'm just, you know, sort of loading up this, uh, this surface with a lot of paint. Now, as you can see right now, the blue doesn't really move that much. But that doesn't matter because we're going to be combing it together in a bit. Just a little bit more, little tiny ones. And some big ones. And I think I'd like some uh, white. Let's see, where do I have the white one? But I want some... I should, oh, here it is. And uh, this is all uh, Vallejo, if you're uh, wondering which type of paint this is. So if you didn't already have a reason to buy Vallejo, I would absolutely buy some. Let's put some white in. Uh, that doesn't work that well. But it'll give it a little bit of... Let's put some in here and there. Maybe it needs a little more Oxco. We'll see two drops. Nah, doesn't matter. We're gonna put a, a more blue on anyway. <coughs> Here we go, loading it up again. That's nice. And then the other blue again. And I think we have enough to comb it. We'll see. You know, there's um, no way... Oh, I see something there that I have to take out. If you have, if you have done this and the next day you're going to do it again, the thing that you want to do is uh, clean off the size with newspaper just to get all this, the uh, dust off. That's a good thing to do. Here's another one. You really don't want those in your paint because it'll leave different marks. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with a comb. This is one I made myself. They're all toothpicks with a little bit of glue on a piece of wood. And as you can see, it makes really cute patterns. And they come in from the side. And do it again. 
Okay, this is uh, this is kind of pretty, but it might be a little bit, you know, blah. So what you do is come back in with a little bit of paint and make it just a little bit different. That's that color. And a little bit more of the turquoise. Okay, that's about enough. Now I'm, I'll get the canvas. And for this, I'm just using a really um, an old can of a, a very cheap canvas just to try it because I see a lot of things drifting on the uh, surface. <coughs> I thought I'd just you know put on some gloves anyway, but I see a lot of stuff uh, creeping up on the surface, and that that's goo from yesterday. So if you really want to do something that you're going to keep, I would suggest that you make a new uh, tray of size before you start. And someone asked, you know, if you can uh, just dump this stuff down the drain. Yes, I do with a little bit of uh, dishwash soap and I just dump it down the drain. So here we go. Now I'm going to do the sides. Oh, uh, we got a little air bubble in the middle, but that doesn't matter because, you know, it was only to show you how, let's see, we can do that again. I might just take, here. Yeah, I did a little bit. So, as you can see, you can transport it onto a canvas, there's no problem at all. The only thing that I don't like is that the brown that I had mixed is really really light and I don't like that so the best thing is to um, to mix very opaque colors and you gotta test it but as you can see you can uh, pick it up even the sides are kinda nice okay now now you still got a lot of paint here in the uh, in the tray so I'll put this one away And what you can do is sort of manipulate it and you can use something like this, uh, one of those air cans. Whoops, that's a little bit too much. <laughs> oh boy. So there it goes. And this would be better with one of those little uh, airbrush uh, canisters, uh, airbrush uh, compressor things, but that's uh, all up to you what you do it with. So I'm going to pull it back down here, all towards the middle. That's it. And then a piece of paper, just to see what we can uh, take off here. And look at that. That is uh, pretty cool. I really like that. I just don't like that I put that reddish brown in. That sort of, you know, makes it look, uh, I don't know, but I don't like it. But as you can see, there are some awesome, awesome patterns in here. Let me get you in close. There you are. See how crispy they are? That's really crispy. And you can just go on, because if you just put this all together in the middle, let me get some more paint. And then I'm really at the end of my uh, size because it's getting all mucky. And there's little, little blobs in there. I don't know <laughs> what that is. That is uh, something that's, you know, going on on the bottom. You see these little... Uh, things going on. I don't know what that is, but okay. Let's just add a little bit more paint because we're going to throw it away anyway. So there we go. 
a little bit more. That's a lot of paint. Now I've been doing some research on the, uh, oh yeah, I don't think you're in focus there. I've been doing some research about um, the best stuff to buy. And in, instead of Oxgull, a lot of people use Kodak Easy Flow. And uh, that is something that they sell on Amazon. Amazon sells it. And I found uh, one in, um, in Holland, in Amsterdam, that sells it. I just ordered it this morning because I think I'll be doing a couple more of these. They're very... Um, very nice to look at, you know, when you're making them. Uh, it's it's really a sort of zen-like. And as you can see, it still works. And this is um, teal, Vallejo teal. And it's Vallejo cyan blue, this one. These are the colors that I find uh, work best. So if you're just starting out, you could start with just white and these two blues and you would get something really amazing. Now, a little bit more of this one. Okay, we're ready. Let's put the brushes on the side. There we go. And then just one more. But this time I want them... Do something else. That is kind of cool. Yeah. Now let's pick it up. I think I will pick that up here, this bit here. That's about it. And right back out. And there it is, look at that. My whole monitor is covered in, in <laughs> spatters. <laughs> That's crazy. Let's see, okay, there you are. See how pretty that is? I love it. Now it also has a lot to do with, you know, watching that paint sort of um, build up and, and the, the, the beautiful dots that you get. See that? Let me see if you're in focus there. It's a lot about, you know, watching that paint expand and, you know, the fun things that it does. And leaving this, you know, what I just took off, leaving it as a background is kind of uh, nice too. So I'm going to concentrate on putting a lot of that paint in the middle here. And the more paint you put on, the more um, vibrant the paint will be when you pick it up with a uh, with the paper. I'll do an overload this time. Oops, wrong container. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Now this time I'm only going to um, use this uh, small one. As you can see, I'm going to go right through the middle here. And I'm going to leave these parts the way they are. That's it. One page or two, no, it's two. And I'm going to pick it right up here. Uh, 
see this is what happens when you get air bubbles see that so you've got to watch out for that but as you can see the color is more intense and because I put a lot of paint on there so if you want a really like pastel-y like um, painting then you put less paint on and you might use transparent colors or semi-transparent but if you want really dark intense colors you have to go for the opaque and you have to really fill it up with a lot of paint so before I throw this out I'll just do one more and this time I'm going to use everything I have see this is a lot of paint this is really covering uh, covering the whole thing with so much paint okay that's a lot and then I'm going to come in with the turquoise I'm going to put a lot in the middle. I'm not going to put them on the sides, but a lot in the middle. There. And then one more with the blue. And I might even uh, do some, uh, some other color. Let's see. What else do we have? I had some yellow that I made up, but that I don't think that's going to work that well. And it's a little thick. Yep, that's way too thick. A little ox skull. One, two, three. And we're really talking drops here. A little water. No, it won't expand. See that? And that's, I'll put in a little more water, but that is, um, some colors really behave well and some don't. And this is a Winsor & Newton, by the way. But as you can see, it's not doing much. I think it'll behave a little uh, differently when we put some uh, combs through it, but let's see. So that's enough of that. So I'm going to do something with them. See that? How you can make little hearts. Like up here, if you were to do this, you just make a little heart. Okay, that's nice as a background. <clears throat> now I'm just going to come back in with <clears throat> a little bit of this, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, let's get it. And this also works with uh, metallic paints. I've done some of that before. Look at that. How vibrant. This is really vibrant. And it's just pretty. Okay, well, you get the idea, and um, making your own tools is uh, really cheap. Like I said, toothpicks, a little piece of wood. I um, took a uh, ruler and I measured it out, then <clears throat> put glue on it and laid the, uh, laid the little uh, toothpicks on there. I had one more of these, of the, the wood that I put here, you know, just to uh, 
make them stable and that they could dry up and it works uh, works fantastic and of course when you're going to um, be using a lot of these <clears throat> you will be making them with uh, different spaces between the two uh, the uh, toothpicks that's the thing that you want to have a couple of um, different sizes in between and I sort of like what it's doing here I like that but you can do all sorts of stuff with it some people do um, do these round things like this and then go on another round one go on and then it, it sort of makes something totally different and you can do a lot with this you can make them smaller like this so you just put one in the middle um, there's so many so many uh, patterns that you can make I sort of like what's going on up here yeah that's the prettiest and some negative space sometimes that's really cool now I was gonna do the sumanigashi or something like that I can't help it when I say that I don't know I know I'm not saying it right so then I have to laugh but look at this is that, is that beautiful that is cool right and this is just printer paper you can you can go like forever with one of those packs of printer paper you can make like hundreds of these and I'm pretty sure that if you um, made these uh, you know mix up like seven colors and then just start making these and hang them out to dry, iron them flat when you uh, are going to an art show. I'm pretty sure you could sell these for a dollar a piece to people that are doing a scrapbook art and, and collages. I'm pretty sure they would buy that, you know, for a dollar. Who wouldn't? This is something that you can do next to your uh, pouring. And, um, you know, you could just uh, have, a, have them in your stall. You just put them somewhere and say a dollar a piece, and I'm sure they'll, you'll sell a lot of them. Because, you know, people for a dollar, why not? So, a little bit more here. And what I like to do, usually, um, you can also do a vein. Um, that is a technique where you only use uh, ox gall and water and you make this spread out really um, crazy like let me get some of that okie dokie a little bit of water a lot of ox gall a little mix now watch what happens See them all, see it all come spread out. And what this stuff is doing, it is um, pushing the, uh, pushing all the paint together. Now, what you're gonna get, I'm gonna stop right there because that's pretty cool. Yeah, cool is my uh, stop word. But look what it does. So after you've done uh, a lot of your uh, um, dipping and you're ready, you can do this, load it all up, then do water with ox gall, and then you get this. And that too is a, a different technique, so let me just do something. So I just put it under the tap, you know, ran a little water over it to make it, you know, because when your size is getting muddy, uh, you have to um, just make sure that you get some of that off there. But is that cool or what? Yes, it is. And you can do this as many times as you want because um, that's just how this stuff works. So what I do is I put my comb through it like this. Get it all together in the middle a little bit. Oh, 
one cone stroke. And where's my stuff? I don't know where I left it. Oh, here it is. And my brush. Here it is. And then just do it all over again. See that? There it goes again. Making the big holes. And every time you dip it, you'll pick up another layer. This one might be even better because I see a lot of uh, little ones here. So let me pick this up. And when you do this in really big, you have to, you know, rub over the paper a little bit, you know, like you're pushing out the bubbles. But here you go. See that? That's a lot of fun. So, now, like I said, I was going to do a sumanigashi. Let me see, where did I leave my uh, ink? So I had my ink, and then I wanted to do it, and then I just did this, and nothing came out because it's all gone hard in the bottle. It is really old, so that's not going to work, and it's not going to happen uh, for a couple of days. I really don't want to drive into town, you know, do my makeup, do my hair, do everything, and um, because I don't feel like it. So I'm going to clean this mess up, and uh, later on today I just might do some uh, normal pouring. Not sure yet, maybe I'll keep it for tomorrow, because there's a lot of cleanup. I've got everything covered in paint here. Um, so I'll show you. Now, can you see all the spatter there? A lot of spatter on the monitor. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's something that you have to take care of when you're doing this. Make sure that you have everything around you. Uh, put some plastic up or something like that. Um, it's it's easy to get off. You know, if you have a, a nice warm, lukewarm cloth, and you put it on there for a couple of minutes, you can just take it off. But you know, why why do the big cleanup when you can put a little bit of plastic around it, right? So um, that's just one thing I want to give, uh, give you a little bit of advice in. So now, recap. The recap is I use wallpaper paste, cellulose. And that's important. You got to get the cellulose. And I'll show it one more time up here. Let's see. There you are. You want to look for that, cellulose. Cellulose, I don't know. So that's what you want to look for. And this one is the bison. Now, you put it in with warm water, about as warm as you can put your hand in. Then with a wisp, you wisp it in. Make sure you don't get any little clauntering bits in there. Then when you're ready, you get a sieve and you pour it through the sieve because you don't want any little bumps in there. So then you pour it in your tray, and you can use a serving tray if you're going to do A4 size, that's okay. Then um, with your paint, you use acrylic paint. If you're starting out, you've never done this before, go with opaque. You've got to have an opaque paint because that, you know, is more intense. Then later on you can, you know, muck around with semi-transparent, whatever. But start with the opaque colors, then all you need is... This stuff, let me get that little squirty thing out there. See how that moves? That is what oxgall does. This is pure oxgall. Just put some more in there. And this is very strong, so if you're gonna make those veiny things, you, you have to mix it with a little bit of water because that's just better. But this is what you wanna buy, and I'll put you in close. And this is the English Oxgall Natural Wetting Agent. This is from Schmincke, but you'll have a lot of brands to choose from. So you put the paint in, you put a couple of drops of uh, Oxgall, and I'm talking drops, people. Don't put too much in, because if it spreads too much, that's not good either. So you don't want to put too much Oxgall in there. Try First try with one drop, two drops, then three. 
and you know build it up now if you have a little container what I would do when I have the size ready I'd scoop it up with a little container and I would test my paints in that so you don't contaminate your big tray that's usually what I did when I was working on this stuff upstairs so then I'd take my little tray and I'd be mixing my paints and every time I'd be dropping a little drop on there just to see you know if it's spreading enough and believe me you don't want it to spread too much because if you put a drop in here and it goes like this big that's not what you're looking for you want normal normal drops like if I were to put this on now can you see is that this? yeah that's the normal spreading uh, thing you don't this is even going too big this one let me get some of the other color Uh, this is almost um, too big, but it's because I, I loaded it up with uh, with pure uh, oxgall, so that's going to happen. But you don't want to have it too big. Let me put this color in, and you can see. See that? That's what you're looking for. And what you do, you just tap it on your finger like that. It makes little and big uh, circles, but also it splatters your monitor and everything you have around you it will be covered in paint so you gotta watch out for that okay then all you have is Oxgal or Easy Flow, Kodak Easy Flow because a lot of people were talking about Kodak Easy Flow being even better than Oxgal because it makes the paint float even better so try that and that's about it it's a little bit of water you can make some tools you can use one of these if you find them somewhere I don't even know this isn't an ice pick by the way I, I bought it for a leather work so um, you can use all kinds of tools and if you want to start out you can even get a fork get a fork and just do it with a fork you can go straight through this stuff and you can make all sorts of little patterns and if you uh, watch the um, the YouTube videos of Ebru you'll see that they make flowers and trees and birds and everything so that's kind of cool too okay this is um, the last one I'm gonna do of the marbling I'm gonna clean everything up and then get back to pouring because I have a couple of ideas that I wanna wanna do okay guys love you all to pieces um, happy happy what do you say when you um, wish someone um, a happy new year we have we say um, in Holland we say gelukkig uh, uiteinde uh, that's it uh, something like a happy end of this year something like that so um, and in German what do they say in German glückliches uh, I don't know <laughs> I bet you'll put it on under the comments right okay Love you all to pieces. Leave a yellow. See you later.